It's a gospel on the radio talk show. A show about dreams and visions and a church that is indeed triumphant, alive, and well. For the church, triumphant is alive and well. Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio talk show, and it is Easter Sunday morning, the morning that we we just take time to celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary. He defeated death, hell, and the grave, and he arose on the third day, and now he lives forever with our Heavenly Father. And we are blessed because we know that we can call to him as our Lord and Savior, and that he has given us eternal life because he is our advocate as he stands before the Father today. And my friend, I'm here to tell you that if you're outside of faith, he's calling to you, and he's simply saying, open your heart to him. He loves you, and he wants to see you when you depart from this earth in the presence of the Lord. And that's just a wonderful thing. We have a few rules on this show. We don't talk sports, politics, or doctrine, but we do always speak well of one another. And that's just served us so well after all of these years. Been doing it almost 20 years now. And on Easter, I always take the time to celebrate because, well, it's a very, very special day for us in the Christian faith. I mean, uh, if it was not for resurrection, we would have no hope. And Jesus Christ showed us the way. (laughs) It's all declared for us in his precious word. Now, I want to invite you to church today. I am the pastor, Freedom Road Christian Ministry, 720 Capital Circle Northeast in the Crescent Park Plaza. You'll find us between Easterwood Drive and Park Avenue. So if you're heading toward Park Avenue, look on the right-hand side of the road. You'll see our sign out there, Freedom Road Christian Ministry. We're in a storefront, so we don't look like a traditional church. But I tell you, we have lovely people. We love the Lord. And today is a special day because uh, we're going to be presenting a performance. And basically, it's a play kind of a recitation, just taking it from the time of Jesus' ministry as he began his public ministry up to the time of the tomb. And um, my son Joshua will be our narrator. He'll be playing the role of John. And John will be telling the story about Christ Jesus and all the things that happened. And uh, there'll be some graphics and there'll be some music and I think you'll enjoy it. So this is your invitation to join us today at 11.05 for our regular Sunday morning service for the special presentation. Now, tell you what I'm going to do. This play that I have written, and uh, I give the Holy Spirit all the credit for it, I'm going to read it to you today here on the broadcast in just a little bit. I'm going to read it, going to illustrate it with a few songs, and that's what we're going to be doing today. But I want to make sure that you are up to date on everything that's going on in uh, the radio ministry. And first of all, that is every Sunday morning here on 94.1. It's the Gospel on the Radio talk show. Uh, We interview a lot of people. We'll be getting back to that after the Easter holiday here. And I want to give you an invitation that if you're involved in Christian ministry, give me a call. Let's get you on the broadcast. I want to interview you. I want to give you an opportunity to share your ministry in the Big Bend area of Florida and up in the South Georgia on the internet, just all over the place. So if you're passionate about what you're doing for Christ, then you are a candidate to be on this show. And I want you right here so we can talk about your passion. So give me a call, area code 850 one seven zero three. And then on Saturday nights, it's the Saturday night gospel sing. I'm the host of that show as well. It's a full hour of great Southern gospel music. And uh, 
Well, that's a blessing to me, and I would just believe it'll be a blessing to you as well. And then the daily broadcast, Monday through Friday, also here on 94.1, the Gospel on the Radio broadcast. So that brings you up to date on all of that. Uh, just to let you know that we're putting these shows on podcasts, so you can find them there. If you want to listen to this later, you can. Uh, and there's many other shows there to listen to on the daily broadcast and the talk show. And uh, you can enjoy those. You could be driving down your road, down the, down the road in your car, <laughs> and just listening to some good gospel talk. So, this is the program we'll be doing today. This is a, I don't, I'm not sure whether we call it a uh, recitation or a play or however it would be. But anyway, it's the story of Jesus Christ. So I'm just going to pick up reading it, and like I say, from time to time, we'll have a little music for you to go along with it. Andrew was the first to hear him speak. He then told his brother Simon, we have found the Messiah, the Christ. And then he came walking along the seashore, past Peter and Andrew's boat, for we are fishermen. He said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He then came by our father Zebedee's boat and called my brother James and me. My name is John, and I am one of his disciples. To hear him speak was amazing. I remember when he first took us to the synagogue in Capernaum. We were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught as one that had authority and not as the scribes. James and I, along with our friends Peter and Andrew, became followers of this man named Jesus the Christ. We were more than followers. We were his disciples because we learned so much. There were other disciples who also he called, but I believe that our bond with him was special. It was amazing to see this powerful ministry unfold. We saw him heal the sick, cast out demons and devils, and the crowds. They just kept getting bigger and bigger until they were multitudes. We witnessed as he fed them all when there was no food except a few loaves of bread and a few fishes. It was an amazing thing that we were seeing. I'll never forget the day when we went to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes, we saw the most fearsome man. He was dwelling among the tombs. Even chains couldn't bind him. And oh, that terrible scream. And he would cut himself. He had so many devils in him that they just called him Legion. And what did Jesus do? He cast them out. He cast them into 2,000 pigs that just went crazy and ran into the sea and drowned. Jesus then called him into ministry and sent him home to be an evangelist to his family and friends of his hometown. I was there the day that the news arrived that a very close friend of Jesus named Lazarus, was very sick. We could not figure out why Jesus tarried, why he didn't leave for Bethany immediately. But he just said that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. So two days went by. We were very confused. Then Jesus said, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I will go and wake him up. And then later he said, Lazarus is dead. So we went to Bethany. We saw Martha and Mary, his sisters. They were very upset. And they said, Jesus, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. This was another one of those 
times when Jesus just brought a beautiful peace to a troubled time. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus then said, where have you laid him? We then went to the tomb. I will never forget how the Lord stood there and cried. And then he got so excited. He said, move away the stone. And then with a loud voice, he said, Lazarus, come forth. I still get chill bumps when I think about that day. From that day forward, everything changed. The multitudes became huge. People heard about the resurrection of Lazarus. They not only wanted to see Jesus, they also wanted to see Lazarus. But not everyone was excited about these things. In Jerusalem, a council was formed made up of chief priests and scribes and Pharisees. They said, what are we going to do? For this man does many miracles. And so the council concluded, we must put him to death. So the ministry continued to grow. There were great crusades People were joining us to help people like those faithful women, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary from Magdala, who Jesus had cast out seven demons. We called her Mary Magdalene. And then there was Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Salome, and Susanna, and of course, Jesus' own mother, Mary. As the intensity grew, Jesus began to talk about things that were to come. It was very disturbing to me and to my other disciples. He said that we must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Well, Peter, he wasn't going to put up with this. He said, be it far from me, Lord. This shall not be. Then Jesus turned to him and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me. You love the things of men more than you do the things of God. And then he said to all of us, Deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow me. Just when I thought I couldn't be amazed anymore. Jesus takes me and my brother James and Peter and Andrew up on a high mountain. Before our very eyes, the deity of Jesus began to come forth. His face began to shine as the sun. His raiment shone white as light. And then Moses and Elias appeared. And Jesus was talking to him. We could hardly stand it. We wanted to build tabernacles there to testify of this glorious event. And then the Passover. It began with much excitement. Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a colt that had never been ridden. The crowds that had followed him down from Galilee throwing palm branches in his path, shouting praises unto him. At the first, it was a great time for the ministry. Jesus teaching in the streets, going and cleansing the temple, and then that wonderful Passover meal where Jesus shocked us all when he took up Elijah's cup and drank it. And then... 
he took a towel and basin and began to wash our feet. I began to weep. Such an emotional time. And then he came to Simon Peter. And Peter said to him, No, thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus said, If I wash ye not, thou hast no part in me. And then Jesus, or then Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head. What we did not know was that while all these things were going on, there was a traitor among us. Judas is a carrot. The one with the bag was, was at that very moment selling out to the council for 30 pieces of silver. So we left the feast room. And Jesus took us to a garden nearby called Gethsemane. He asked that the four of us, me, Peter, James, and Andrew, to pray for him. We could see that he was very troubled. We were all full of food and wine. We failed him and promptly went to sleep. Jesus went deeper into the garden. Occasionally I would awake to hear him groaning and then I would doze off again. Again he came back to us and chastised us. He said, could you not watch with me for one hour? He then goes back into the garden. God sent angels to reinforce him. He prayed through. Prayer so intense he sweat blood. But he won the victory. He said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. When he came back to us, he told us to go back to sleep. But then, coming across the garden, men with torches, swords, and leading them, with Judas. He runs up to Jesus, kisses him on the cheek, a signal of betrayal to those who sought to kill Jesus. There was a scuffle, but they took him away. The next few hours was madness. Some ran away, Peter actually denied that he'd even known Jesus. Judas, when he realized what he had done, killed himself. And so the council, made up of scribes and elders and high priests, had worked their plan. They had him. They brought forth one false witness after another in a fake trial. And then took him to Pilate, a spineless politician that only cared for his own self and was willing to stand by while an innocent man was brutally tortured and murdered. Crucifixion, a barbaric act invented by the corrupt Roman government. With all that was done to Jesus, the devil's dominion was on full display. The forces of hell were gleeful, believing that they had accomplished its greatest victory. They had killed the Son of God. But as the Son of Man, the Messiah, the Redeemer of all mankind, hung on that horrible cross, he sealed Satan's fate with those incredible words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. With that prayer, pardon was given to all people for all time, to all of those who would receive it. God's plan 
was accomplished. Ultimate victory for Father God and Jesus Christ. A strange, eerie presence hung over the city of Jerusalem that day. A sense of confusion. Those that were so determined to see him dead had seemingly won the victory. His disciples had lost their confidence that they had done the right thing, and those who had followed him felt powerless to face the future. Scripture records that there were two men that were traveling down the road to a town called Emmaus who encountered a stranger that seemed to know nothing of these events, whereupon they replied, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass? As they conversed, they came to realize that the stranger was Jesus himself, and then he vanished. And the men were very stirred, and said, Do not our hearts burn within us? As we open the, or as he opened the scriptures to us, amazing events took place on that day. In the Gospel of Matthew, it tells us that uh, resurrection power was so strong and was so intense that there were literally people who came out of the grave that day. But early on the first day they discovered that the stone was rolled away and Jesus was gone, resurrected just like he had said, the fulfillment of God's plan of redemption for all humanity. Many witnessed him alive again. For 40 days he lived up on the earth and then they watched as one day he ascended into heaven to live eternally as he sits on the right hand of God making intercession for all those who would seek him. Matthew twenty six sixty four. I say unto you, hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of glory. So, if you have uh, enjoyed the uh, presentation this morning, this is a, a play that I wrote, and we're going to be uh, performing it at Freedom Road the, the, during the Sunday morning service at 11.05. And my son Joshua is going to be playing the role of John, and I assure you he will do a much better job than I have done this morning. But you get the jest of it. And the thing is, is that as I began to write this, and, and as God just began, and I really felt like the, the Holy Spirit was just flowing through me as I was writing these words, because basically it's just taking the Scripture and just bringing it to a place to where it becomes very easy for you to understand the sequence of the events that took place that brought Jesus to the cross of Calvary, to that ultimate place of victory, which is what he has won for not only himself and for Father God, but for you and I today. That if you're a person and and you have not discovered the fact that there is eternal life. You see, I tell people this all the time. Um, <laughs> let's say, I say this from time to time to people. That, you know, you can live your life However you choose to live your life. You know, the scripture talks about it. Eat, drink, and be merry. Just go, just go live your life. But there's one thing you better not do, and that's die. Because when you die, you face this question. Is there eternal life? Or is it just darkness from that point on? You, you die and there's no more. Well, I'm convinced in my heart that there's much more. That this life is just, as, as Scripture says, it's just a vapor. You're just passing through. 
It's very short. And of course, <laughs> the older I get, the more I come to realize that. That's very short. And then you face that question. Is there life after death? Now, the obvious response to that would be say, well, if, if I'm wrong, that I, I suffer nothing as a result of it because I'm, I'm living a happy life. I follow the uh, principles of Jesus Christ. I follow his teachings. They bring quality of life to me. I have joy and peace in my heart. And so I'm ready to face whatever comes. But if I am right and that person who is in unbelief is wrong, then my brother, my sister, the consequences of that decision is severe. Very, very severe. Because once you die, you will be out of the presence of God forever. And the horror the scripture tells us about, about those who perish from this earth outside of faith, and face the devil's dominion. It's, it's a horrible thing to even think about. And I wish that upon no one. But what I do wish and hope and pray for each and every one of us, that on this resurrection day, as scripture says it this way, settle it, settle it. Do you believe or do you not believe? And if you believe, then Scripture says, if you confess that, and you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you ask him to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, the word of God says, it'll be done. And your sins will be removed as far as Scripture says, as far as the east is from the west. And your heart will be made pure that you may stand before Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, who lived a sinless life and went to the cross of Calvary and bore your sins and my sins to that horrible cross and won the victory. And that victory is for me and that victory is for you. My friend, I say to you today that if you have not settled this and you cannot say beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and that you are saved from the, uh, the damnation of life eternal in hell, then I would say to you, settle it. Talk to God. Let him minister to you. And just pray a simple prayer. And that goes for each and every one of us. For you, for me, and for all those around the world. God loves humanity. And scripture tells us that his thoughts of us are more in, in a day's time than the sand of the sea. That's just an amazing thing. But every individual is very uh, close and very special to God. And he died for each and every one. And I love that song. It says, while he was on the cross, we were on his mind. And uh, how he loves so much. And scripture talks about that uh, as he's facing all these things there in Jerusalem, it says that he wept over that city. If in all of its corruption, Jesus Christ wept over that city. What amazing thought. I just want to tell you that um, all of these uh, the talk shows are put on a, a podcast. And if you would like to listen to this again, uh, it's 1,068 is the number you'd be looking for. Um, just uh, You'd probably be under the title of 2022 Easter. And if you want to share it with a friend or come to Freedom Road this morning at 1105 
and you'll get to see the whole thing presented uh, by the uh, family there at Freedom Road. My son Joshua will be playing the uh, role of John. He'll be the one telling the story. And I believe it'll be a blessing to you. And so I'm just encouraging you, come and worship with us. at 720 Capital Circle Northeast in the Crescent Park Plaza. And that is between Easterwood Drive and Park Avenue. So if you're, if you're on Capital Circle and you're heading toward Park Avenue, then you'll see our sign. We put it out there on Sunday morning. Free to road, big blue and white sign. <laughs> kind of hard to miss. And you won't see a traditional church building. It's a, it's a storefront. But you turn right there where you see that sign and then just a little jog off to the left there and you'll, you'll come to the church and, uh, we'll be looking for you and bring the family. We hope to see, uh, many of you from the radio audience coming out this morning and enjoying this presentation at Freedom Road because, well, we love the Lord and, uh, we love the Word of God. And, and to me, it's just such a joy and privilege to be able to present the, uh, message of Jesus Christ in such a way, and a play is always a very effective tool to be able to minister love and grace. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's one of the things we love to do at Freedom Road. So every Sunday morning, come and join us again at 1105. You can find us on the web, frcm.us. Just a couple of things as we're kind of uh, coming to the end of the broadcast today, and that's just to remind you of the youth camp that's coming up. It's coming up fast, and I like to make sure that everybody is informed. It is July 18 through 22. It's a youth camp that goes from age 8 all the way up to age 18. It's two camps. We run them side by side, and it works out beautifully. <laughs> and so if you uh, have a younger one, then send them to junior camp or, or teenagers to the senior camp. It's $150, but I'm telling you what, you get a lot for $150. Bucks. And, and in this day and time, in this economy, that's a bargain. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's a bargain. But what happens is that there are people who step up to help us so that we can keep the fees low. And maybe you're one of those people. And you'd like to just contribute. So just say, Pastor King, I, I believe in what you're doing, and I want to help. And so if you want to send a contribution, just make it out to a Christian Youth Ministries International or CYMI and mail it to 526 East 8th Avenue, Tallahassee 32303. That's 526 East 8th Avenue. And uh, then if you want to become a person who just dedicate time to pray, I would so be blessed to know that many of this radio audience is praying over this youth camp, praying for these kids' safety, praying for a move of God, pray that the ministry of the Holy Spirit would come forth during this time. So please, if you would be a prayer warrior, Somebody who'd pray for this camp, and then I would appreciate it so very, very much. That would just be a wonderful blessing to me. Any way you can help, we appreciate it. Because what we do, we do it to the glory of God. In the, the youth ministries and the radio broadcast that we do, it's all to his praise and his glory. And I am so thankful that God has raised up people who see the value of these ministries and they just want to help. And uh, some of you, are, you send contributions to help with the radio ministry. Thank you so much. And maybe somebody new that's listening today and you say, well, I didn't know you needed any, any help. <laughs> well, hey, uh, the Holy Spirit has done this. We've been doing radio now, and I say we. I always include my wife in this. She's behind the scenes but we've been doing radio ministry now. God called me back to it after a 20-year absence. We've been at it now 20 years. And all the bills are paid. And uh, uh, to him be glory and praise. But there's more that we could do. We could expand this ministry if, if the 
the funds were available. So maybe that's something you'd want to think about. I'd love to take the music show to other stations across the country. And uh, the daily broadcast, we have it on the praise radio. It goes all over the world, but there are other places we can take it. And uh, and you could be involved in all of that. So if you have questions, call me. Area code 850-567-1703. There's ways you could be involved. And uh, I'd love to have you on the team. So those are just things. Hope you've enjoyed the presentation today. Uh, the greatest story that's ever been told. The story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who loves us and gave so much that we might have quality of life and life eternal. And to him, we give all the glory and all the praise. And we're so thankful just for an opportunity to be able to serve him in these capacities. And uh, we'd love to see you. Come visit with us today, Freedom Road, Christian Ministry, 720, Capital Circle, Northeast in the Crescent Park Plaza. Check us out on the web, frcm.us. Father God, I thank you today for this privilege, and I pray, Father, that you would bless the presentation today at Freedom Road. And Father God, I pray over this radio audience. Lord, I just pray you'd bless them, to watch over and protect them, Father God. And Lord, I pray for peace, for peace around the world. I pray for my country, Father God. And I pray for peace in the city of Jerusalem, in the nation of Israel. And Father God, to these, we just lay them all at your feet, Father God, because we know that you are the ultimate victor in it all. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next Sunday morning, may the Lord bless you.